This is Oliver Lucanus from Below Water. Every so often we get new fish that all come from one place. And in Peru, this usually happens when someone ventures into terra firma looking for fish that are endemic to a small area in a region that is not affected by the flooding of the Amazon lowland. Muchas gracias a Victor Alvan y su equipo por el video y las fotos del habitat filmadas esta semana. Here, in the headwaters of the Amaya, the water runs over rocks, and even strong rains at this time of the year do not cloud the water. This is the actual location where the pencil fish are caught. And as you know, I often mention that fish need more current than we provide. But the flow in this shallow river is not at all what we would expect. When it rains this much, the river is less red colored. This location is near the famous Pongo de Manzariche where the Marañón has to squeeze through a narrow gap and has considerable flow. Here, the water has changed to the classic muddy white water that all three of the major tributaries of the Amazon carry. Far upstream of the Rio Marañón, one of the principal tributaries that forms the Amazon, shorter rivers originating in the foothills of the Andes and Ecuador flow south. We have seen fish from the Aguarunas indigenous territory in the Rio Pastanza and Rio Morona before, and the new spectacular pencil fish from this river has been captured some 10 years ago, but only a handful were exported. I propose the common name really red pencil to avoid confusion with the already confused red pencil and blood red pencil, Nanostomus mortentaleri and Nanostomus rubrocaudatus. In the early 1990s, news of these new fish from Peru spread quickly and both species are still available today. Because the habitats occur not far from the export hub in Iquitos, some study is needed to ensure they are not overcollected, even though they occur an hour-long march and more into the forest. Given the complex logistics of bringing fish from such a remote location, the new pencil fish is unlikely to be overfished like the two closely related species that can be caught within a short distance from Iquitos. Today I want to show the other fish from this habitat. The Rio Amaya is a small western tributary of the Rio Morona with dark black water, a cobblestone substrate and very soft and acidic water. You can imagine how fish from such a unique habitat will not easily spread to other places. And this is why we see so many unique, new and described epistogrammas from the small terra firma streams along the Peruvian Amazon's tributaries. This habitat is considerably far from those of the other two retinanostomus, so I would think we will have other new species in the future. Our new really red anonostomus is still expensive, but like all new fish from Peru, I expect that to change soon. What is interesting is that we are seeing a number of other interesting fish from this habitat. There are other tetras here, including a tiny reddish-orange Ephesa brucon, and these have arrived very thin, but I'm sure they will eventually get much nicer colors. My favorite, and I think nicer than the new pencil fish, is this fish. It is likely a Knotus species that reaches around 2 inches or 5 centimeters. The cool thing is that this fish is incredibly territorial. In a 3 foot or 90 centimeter long aquarium, there is barely enough space for two males to show color. They spent all day sparring over the edges of the territory and seem to also push around other tetras that are in the aquarium and even challenge the epistogrammas. The fish has bright red eyes and purple and blue sides, a spectacular fish that I really want to see in a large group in a much larger aquarium. We also received Dectrobrichon armeniacus from this habitat, by no means a new fish, but it is very beautiful and a chunky and strong tetra with rainbow colors and it is also a little bit territorial. Certainly worth a look, even if my group is currently getting pushed around by the new Knotus. Likewise, there is a very red Pyrolina that also hold their own against most other fish. With fish like this, I'm concerned that once they are in harder, less acidic water, this red hue will disappear. In the first photos from the habitat, these Pyrolina had intense red fins, but some 10 days later in my clear water tank, they look a lot less impressive. There are also Leviacina. If you think the Knotus is aggressive, Leviacina take it to another level. This fingerling little fish thinks it is a giant wolffish and it is extremely combative. Best kept in large aquariums with carefully selected tank mates. But they are really interesting fish with nearly 20 species in the genus that we almost never see in the hobby. 
This should be Libya Sina elongata and may reach about the size of a large cigar. There is, of course, a new epistogramma. It is one of the bulky species, with extensions on the tail, a tall dorsal fin, and a very large mouth. This species is similar to other Peruvian species such as Epistogramma mortentalari, Epistogramma barlowi, or Epistogramma huascar. There are just so many new epistogrammas in this region, it seems we have several new ones each year. In soft, acidic water, I expect these fish to get a lot more color and have a lot more orange. That is also because fish from these blackwater habitats all seem to have some red or orange color. Despite the large mouth, they do not eat small fish, and while they are fairly aggressive towards each other, they do not try to eat or bully the tiny pencil fish. The other cichlid known to occur here is what I think is Aquidens patriki, but in this dark red water they look absolutely beautiful. I expect these to come in the next shipment from the river. Likewise, the Eritrinus from the Amaya has a lot of red color. Will this fish keep the bright red and orange tones long term? That remains to be seen, and I will try to follow up with Scott, who now has this fish in Toronto. Some other odds and ends also arrived from this shipment, including a very beautiful Sembranches marmoratus with a dark body and an orange skunk stripe down its back. There are also some plecos here, including this Chetostoma with tiny spots on the body, as well as likely a new Ancestress. So far, no Corridoras. And I want to finish today's video with this knife fish. Likely it is just an aberrant color morph of a black hippopygus, but the pattern is so fantastic I wanted to briefly show the fish here. I will try to update how these fish develop in the coming months and maybe we can get some of the equidens to display this kind of color in the aquarium. Make sure to stay in touch by subscribing to this channel.